the UMass class of 2021. Uh, where Ashley earned her BS in managerial economics with a minor in English. And she currently works remotely for a global risk management company uh, headquartered in Chicago. And she'll tell us a little bit more about that um, when she shares a bit more about her bio. Then we have Nima Chatterjee. Nima is from the class of 2020, graduating with a BS in resource economics on the natural resource and environmental track with us. And she currently works for Liberty Mutual Insurance as an associate in the analytics development program. Our last um, participant or our last um, presenter is Samari Ijezi. She is an economics major um, from the class of 2017 and is a spokeswoman, financial analyst, model, writer, and founder of The Female Economist. With close to five years of experience leading financial analysis in custodial banking, entertainment, and the advertising industry for companies like State Street, Spotify, and the Publicus Group. Awesome. So as you can tell, this is going to be really exciting. Um, so what I'm going to do is just hand it over in the order that we read the bios off. And so if Ashley, you'd like to just share a few more words about what it is you do, maybe how you landed in the position you're in now, that would be wonderful. And then we'll hear from Nima and Samari. Sure. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I just graduated last May, so it hasn't been too long since, um, since I've been at UMass. So it's been really awesome. Super excited to be here, but I'm Ashley. I know a couple of you on the call. It's nice to see you again, but it's nice to meet those of you that I don't know. Um, I work for a risk management group under Commercial Risk Solutions. It's called Aon. Um, we have a variety of different solution lines like retirement, health solutions, reinsurance, um, but I landed under commercial risk and I work in the transportation industry. So it's um, managing risk for um, large transportation companies. So AKA trucking companies. Um, really interesting. I actually interned for the company last summer and then joined full time. I think I accepted in late October. So um, about a year ago and I've been there for four months. Um, it's been really great. But outside of that, I interned um, in the big tech industry this summer going into my junior year at UMass. So I have some experience in that as well. Um, and that was great, but just having different internship experiences really showed me what I wanted out of a career and what I didn't want. Um, and I chose the resource economics major when I was a sophomore at UMass. Um, and I cannot say enough great things about it. Um, and I also can't say enough about how relevant it is to the work that I do today. Um, so just really great program, really great faculty and professors and support. Um, so yeah, I can talk a little bit more about how my degree has helped me in my career and the things that I've learned a little bit later on, but that's a little bit about me. Wonderful, thank you, Ashley. Nima? Hi guys, I'm Nima. Um, just like Ashley, I also graduated pretty recently, um, December of 2020. So basically I was a junior and on Handshake, I got a message from Liberty Mutual recruiting and I interviewed and interned at Liberty Mutual in their analytics developmental program. And at the end of the summer, I received an offer and I accepted it in late August, early September, and I just started up. So I kind of had like a year to just chill. And now I've been working for a month. Um, I'm still in training. So basically the analytics developmental program is a rotational program. So it's three months of training and then three rotations. And then you eventually place out into one of the departments in analytics. So yeah, pretty new um, to the whole working life, but I've definitely learned a lot. And I also just had a great time um, at UMass and with just being in Resec. So I'm excited to talk more about how my experiences have helped me now. And hi everyone, my name is Samari. I actually double majored while at UMass. So I studied political science and economics. I completed my degrees in 2018. Um, so I've been out of college for a couple of years now. Um, currently, I work at Publicis Group, which is an advertising agency. I work as a finance manager, so I oversee like 18 different clients, um, a budget of like 10 million right now. Um, and kind of where I want to go with my career is becoming my own boss. So I started my own business teaching financial literacy um, to nonprofit individuals and um, low income individuals. Um, and it's been great so far. And I definitely want to just continue 
becoming a girl boss and just working for myself and helping others while doing it. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for jumping in and sharing a little bit more about yourselves. You've done some wonderful things so far um, and excited to hear more. So this is designed to be more of a Q&A session. And so I'm inviting anyone who'd like to from the audience, um, you are welcome to pose questions either in the chat or you're welcome to raise hands, jump in, we'll try whatever. And if it doesn't work, we'll rearrange. So feel free to pose questions in any way, shape or form that you would like to um, and learn a little bit more about our panelists that way. How about this? To get us started while people are thinking of all those pressing questions that they have. Um, with this being a women in economics panel, we'd be remiss to not ask the question about being specifically women in the field. So are there ways in which being a woman in the field of economics has shaped your interests or experiences? And if so, how? And anyone and everyone can jump in. I can start us off. Um... I have learned pretty quickly um, working in risk management and specifically in the industry I'm in right now. Um, it's very male dominated. Um, and so in a lot of client meetings, um, I am the only woman in the room or in the virtual room um, currently. So um, definitely it's been a, a unique experience and some of my um, other female colleagues that have worked at the practice a little bit longer than me have recalled experiences of being called out um, for, you know, being the only woman in the room and wanting to hear what the woman has to say, um, things like that. And so I think for me, I've just always been a little bit, you know, more prepared, um, not necessarily like feeling like I'm being looked at a certain way, but just um, knowing that just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that um, I have anything less to say. Um, and my practice in particular is split very 50-50 between genders. And so um, I've always felt really supported to be active in client meetings, um, to share new ideas that I have, um, things like that. And it's just been a really positive experience for me. Um, my manager is also a woman. So I think we have that sort of a bond as well. Um, and we know that the industry that we work in is very male dominated. So I've just felt a lot of support and also the firm that I work for um, has a lot of initiatives to involve women. Um, so we actually have what they call as a business resource group. Um, and they have one that's called the Women's International Network where women have the chance to interact with one another across all geographies. So that's been very positive um, for me as well, just to be able to connect with other females um, across the globe that work for the same firm, but in different areas and share experiences that way. Um, so definitely I've seen people lead by example and I've just had a lot of support going forward. Mari, yeah. I see your, yep, yeah, go right ahead. Sorry, um, I can agree to that. I feel like ever since I started in the financial realm. I started out at State Street, which actually was in Hadley, Mass. Um, and I was like one of three Black African-American women on our whole trading floor. So for me, it definitely sparked an interest to continue, you know, working in finance because I felt like I wasn't represented in that industry. Um, and I felt like, and just overall felt like, um, you know, when you don't see like yourself being represented in an industry or, um, or in a department, I felt like the need to continue down that road um, and definitely just uplift as I kept growing. So trying to recruit more African-Americans into finance and accounting. And I worked in different industries. So I worked at a college, I worked at Spotify um, and there wasn't people that looked like me. So it definitely just, you know, gave me the drive to continue to work hard um, and just become like a known face in the financial realm. And that's why I'm here to definitely just continue to, you know, inspire others that you can do it too. And even though that economics is a very um, male dominated field, um, there's definitely room for, for us. Yeah, I think similar to what Ashley and Samari said, I did notice early on, like in classes and even interview settings, like it is male dominated and coming into Liberty. Um, I think just like interning, I 
kept in mind that I do want to be at a company that values diversity. So um, right now in my analytics developmental developmental program, it is split up pretty evenly, like with males versus females. So I think that is really important. And I definitely appreciate that. And we also have uh, this resource group for women um, at the company. So I think that's really cool. Um, and it's actually something that kind of drew me to the company is last summer, my internship team was all women, which was just super empowering. Um, but in situations where, you know, you are kind of the one where maybe you feel like your voice is a little bit smaller or, you know, things like being interrupted or not feeling like you're as well represented. I think like as Samari said, like you can look at it as something to empower you and inspire you to stay in that field. Um, and still pursue like what you're interested in. Thank you. Um, oh, Don's got a question, so. Hi, I'm just gonna lower my hand before I forget. So, so my name's John Spragan and I'm the chair of the resource economics department. And, and so really the reason I'm here is to look for ways that the department can be more inclusive of women and, and can do a better job of, of getting more women in to, to our program. And so to the extent that any of you have thoughts about, about that, I, I'm, that's really what I'm doing here. I'd like to hear those kinds of things. So, so I do hear, uh, Nima talk, talking about resource groups for women. So that, that's a great idea, right? And perhaps we can, we can do more things along those lines, but really any suggestions that you have uh, along those lines, I would really appreciate hearing. And, and it's great to see you and it's great to see the alumni my back. I, I remember both Ashley and Nima from my 202 class. And, and, you know, I'm really thrilled to see you uh, doing so well. So congratulations and thanks for joining us. <laughs> I took one of your classes um, a few years back as well, too. So I remember you. You're a great professor. Um, to answer that, I would say from my perspective, um, I would think advertising because I know that I completed my political science degree as a sophomore and I needed like more credits to kind of walk. So I just picked up um, economics because it was just a hassle to get into Eisenberg. I was gonna study either accounting or finance. And then I was like, ooh, what's economics? So I feel like if it was advertised more um, and then also showcase like kind of the career opportunities that you can get with this degree, I think people would be a little bit more informed because I was, I didn't really know what economics was but then I think I spoke with my guidance counselor and she was just like, you know, you want to be a financial journalist, look at economics. And then I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, so I feel like advertising definitely like showcasing the career opportunities um, could also help. I would agree with that. And I think along with advertising, the major itself and the careers, I think one of my biggest takeaways from the Res Act department um, was how much leadership skills I took away from it um, and how much of a team player it made me in terms of project work, because that is immediately what I was thrown into in my first job. Um, and so when I, when I found the major, I was actively seeking a new major to go into. Um, and I kind of inferred from the courses that were featured on, you know, these are the courses you would be taking if you were in this major, those are really appealing to me. Um, and I kind of inferred that if I were to take these courses, I could make the career that I wanted to out of it. Um, but I think especially highlighting that you can become an incredible team player through taking team-based courses through the Res Ec major um, and that there's major opportunities to become a leader. Um, that would have been something that would have been even more appealing to me. And I don't think necessarily that in other majors where the classes are so incredibly large, um, that that is necessarily possible in other courses. Yeah, I really like that idea that you just brought up, Ashley, because I'm trying to think back when I was looking into the Resac major, I don't think I knew, like looking at the website and like those general like course sheets like give you an overview on like the tracks that you can take um, going to managerial or like natural resource. I didn't know about that either. And I do think that like now in probably all of our careers, like it's just so important and 
I, yeah, I would agree with that, that if that could just kind of be like pushed out more and like the benefits of TBL um, be talked about more. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the audience at this time? Also feel free um, if you don't want to turn on your camera or raise your hand, feel free to use the chat um, to pose questions as well if you are um, feeling a bit shy, but we're all we're all friends here. So, you know, don't feel um, any kind of pressure to, you know, uh, to speak up if you'd like. Um, so I can ask another question is, you know, since we do have, I can recognize some, oh, we've got a question um, in the chat. So what were your experiences like finding your first internships? It's a really good question. Um, I remember I was really determined to find an internship pretty early on in college. I knew some people that had internships the summer going into their sophomore year, but I didn't even have a major at that point. So, you know, I wasn't ready quite yet, but once I chose the res ec major, I was really determined to find a career that I could start experimenting with and seeing if it was something I would like. Um, my experience finding an internship, I'll be very honest, was really difficult. Um, I applied to at least 30 internships, like definitely at least 30. Um, and I got two interviews and one of the interviews was the job I got. Um, so it's really difficult and I'll be very transparent about that. It speaks to the amount of people that apply to these internships and the caliber of the people that are applying to the internship. So it is tough. Um, and that's why my biggest suggestion would just be to apply to as many as you can, but also to be organized with it. Um, it can be very overwhelming when you're just bookmarking and bookmarking application over application. Um, so my biggest suggestion is just to make a master spreadsheet of different internships and separate them via the industry or if they're remote or if they're in person, what city they're in, um, the role, the job description, and then also having different columns that have the application due date, things like that. Um, just the more organized you are, the more prepared you feel. Um, and then when I only got two interviews, I said, I have to give these two interviews everything I have because I don't know how much more I'll get. Um, and so other tips I would suggest for that is um, if you can find who you'll be interviewing with, um, I would try to see if they're on LinkedIn, see if you can find any background information on them, um, where they went to school, how long they've worked at the company that they're working at right now, um, what their different interests are, things like that. Just another thing to help prepare you um, and then also there's a wide variety and um, even in the res ec classes, even um, I know we talked about this, but there's a wide variety of resources that can tell you what the most popular interview questions are, um, either for internships or for certain industries, what they might ask you. Um, and I practiced my answers to those questions many times. I remember practicing in Colby's office for um, the job I literally have now. So practice is not um, does not go unnoticed. So um, it's very tough and it's very time consuming, but I think if you're organized, you have a very high leg up on getting an internship and you just need to keep applying and practicing. Um, and I ended up getting an internship going into my junior year and that was the one in the big tech and that was a great, great experience. So um, yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't know if anyone else can speak to that too. Yeah, I also was super determined to get an internship early on in college. And for me, I started so sophomore year going to junior year, I applied to a bunch and I didn't even get emails back. And like at this point, I wasn't I was just kind of sending in my resume, but I hadn't heard about I don't know if any of you guys know about how like um, systems like basically pick up your resumes on keywords like it's not a person actually looking and reading through so definitely being um, mindful in that um, but I also was like okay like I am a sophomore like I know that it's a lot harder when you're younger um, and I ended up just like calling a couple companies that I hadn't heard back from and like sometimes just talking to somebody even to see like the status of your application um, is really helpful and the internship I ended up doing for sophomore year going to or sorry uh, yeah, sophomore going to junior was um, at this uh, public agency uh, 
firm and it was really nice. It was part-time. It was more casual. I did a little bit with like Google ads, Google analytics, and then that helped me like get a more specific internship that was like more like serious. It was, it was a lot more casual. Like I wanted like a full-time, like, okay, like this is where I actually, you know, am thinking about like you know, taking my career. So um, junior year, I got a message, I think I mentioned on Handshake. And I had was I was kind of going through my handshake and I had a couple of messages and I kind of were just, I was just like, oh, like they're just sending this out, like copying and pasting to everybody. But usually when you get a message on Handshake, it is like very highly likely that you'll get an interview because they look out for like certain things that, you know, they want like your GPA, your major, all that. So I would recommend if you see one of those, like to try to go for it. Cause, um, yeah, uh, I ended up just getting an interview after seeing the message on handshake and, um, it was honestly like, like really nice to just have, it was like a pretty easy process, like after that, but also just like going to di like different event. Like, I, I think that SBS has a couple of like networking events where you walk around to like, like companies like Target, TGX, um, and Liberty too also goes to those events. But I don't know how they're doing it now, but um, just like trying to pick up like contact cards or just like, I guess now, and like with everything being more digital, like reaching out to recruiters specifically um, is really helpful too. Yeah, I agree to all of that. Um, I was very determined to like land an internship while in college as well. And I just utilized my resources and also my network. So when I was in college, I was actively on LinkedIn connecting with like thousands of people as well as like, like what is the word? Um, just maintaining great relationships with my, prof my professor. So I know one of my professors submitted me for an internship with at the Rachel Maddow show and I interviewed didn't get it but it was still huge in my career um and what else could I say um I would just say definitely just be on it so whether that's like making a spreadsheet and you know reviewing everything keeping it organized but I would also say definitely just like using your network and reaching out to people that you know finding companies that you want to work at um and actually, I got an internship like my sophomore year at PBS. Um, and how I got that internship was literally just showing up to PBS. I actually landed a job in canvassing and I knew I did not want to be a canvasser. Um, so I waited outside of a network studio until all of like the executive producers were leaving work at like five o'clock. I waited outside for like two hours and I spoke to someone who had her own show and I was like hi I'm looking for an internship and they literally hired me on spot and yeah it was a great experience I was working in the newsroom um so definitely just think outside the box and like you know if you're determined and you're adamant on landing something of your dream like it will happen um yeah that's all I can say <laughs> Thank you. There's two related questions in the chat that I'm going to share and you can address one or both parts of it. So one question was um, about what networking do you do in general? Do you think networking has helped you with getting an internship or your overall career so far? And then another related question was, do you use your LinkedIn department's LinkedIn alumni um, to connect within the field as well? I can start again. Um, networking is something I didn't touch upon in my last answer, but that is incredibly helpful. Um, it definitely helps with getting an internship. Um, I can say that the first internship I had, um, I knew someone that worked in the company I ended up working for, and that kind of helps separate you from the thousands of other applications that a company may get. Um, so it's definitely something worth investigating. And networking doesn't have to necessarily be someone that you know, um, and this kind of refers to the department alumni LinkedIn page. Um, I was very known to go on LinkedIn and to look up just UMass alumni in general and to see if they worked at any of the companies that I was interested in. Um, and I would just try to connect with them and send them a quick message with my connection invite. And I would introduce myself and I'd say, I'm this major, I'm this year, I'm really interested in working for your company. Um, do you have a couple minutes just to talk or so that I can learn more? 
um, and also just seeing what they have to say. And then that's a new connection for you that lives on after you're even applying for an internship. Um, and people are usually very willing to talk about the work that they do and their experiences, which is always a plus for someone who's looking for an internship. So um, networking can go far beyond just a career fair. You can take it virtual, you can pick, make it in person, and you can also network within UMass, which is really nice too. Um, you never know who knows who. Um, but also uh, one last tip I'll share about that is you never know who your family knows. Um, like I mentioned, the first internship that I had was through someone that I knew that was working through the company. And that was a connection that one of my relatives had. So if you know someone that is part of your family that um, works in corporate America, works in the industry that you wanna be in, just ask around and see if they know anyone that works at the company that you're interested in and you never know. Um, but networking is very helpful, especially when you're an intern, especially when you don't have as much experience, it can just can help give you a leg up. Yeah, I think just like not being afraid to tell anybody what you have going on. So like, yeah, you can tell, like, I remember one time I was in Alicia's office, my advisor, and we were doing class stuff, but I just like happened to tell her like, oh yeah, like I have an interview at Liberty. Like I'm so nervous. Like I just like, just by telling her that, like I walked out and then somebody else had walked in for their appointment after. And then she emailed me and was like, oh, like the person who had an appointment after is also interviewing at Liberty. So if I had not mentioned that, like, and we just talked about class stuff or just something else, then like we wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to connect to that other student and like collaborate. And like, now we're still like, we both work at the company and we're still like a connection. And also just like what Ashley was saying about talking to family, like even at like family events, like just be like, oh yeah, like I'm, this is what, what I have going on. This is what I'm interested in. And then like, you don't know like what um, other companies, sometimes like you don't know what's out there. So just to hear about other people's experiences. So just like not being afraid to just talk to literally anybody. Um, but yeah, I would say, so that was an example probably of how networking was helpful prior to my career, but now starting out, like I'm still in training. I have two months left. I'm a month in and, um, the program I'm in, like, we definitely have a lot of time and like, it's up to us how we want to use it. And they push like trying to like reach out to people for coffee chats. And I think that can be really helpful just because, um, for me personally, like it is a rotational program I'm going into. So talking to people from different departments and being like, oh, wait, like that sounds really interesting. And just like, for the future for knowing where I want to go rotate and place out um is really nice so just like um yeah even like networking once you start working with like different people and organizations in the company and sometimes that can help you like with what you're currently doing and what you're working on too and also another thing I forgot to mention about the last question about interviewing tips was I forgot to mention timing so when I was a junior I like I was kind of like well when do I start applying for the summer um the earlier the better I would say I guess it's different for every company but um I think I interviewed in the fall and because I know when it gets like later to spring they're like kind of like finishing finding their people so I would say start as early as you can um but yeah I just wanted to add that in for the last the last question Awesome. Are there other questions? I think we've captured everything in the chat, but stop me if there's a question we've missed. Um, are there any other questions the audience would like to ask? Okay, what, what did you want to pursue your major um, or field you're in now? Um, I was very drawn to res econ for the analytics portion that I felt I would take away from it. Um, there were a lot of classes that um, kind of mimicked the field of consulting. That was like the big thing that I had in my head, um, especially when I became a junior in college, consulting was huge. And that was like the big prize at the end of the tunnel for me was I wanted to go into consulting. Um, and so that was kind of where I thought that resource economics could, it could help me go into consulting, but I also wasn't really locked into any sort of industry. I could apply to the same jobs that a finance major would or a marketing major would or an OIM major would. Um, I wasn't necessarily locked into anything that was really appealing to me. But um, I, like I said, I, I interned for a big tech firm and it was great, but I quickly realized that it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, and the best way to find out what you want to do is to figure out what you don't want to do. So um, I learned that really quickly. Um, and so that was really when consulting became a big 
interest of mine. Um, I didn't land any jobs in a consulting firm, um, but I landed in risk management, which I didn't really know too much about, but I was very fortunate to be able to intern for the company that I work at now. Um, and so why I decided to stay was um, I really do think that risk management is a great gateway into consulting, if that's something that anyone's interested in the future. Um, but also just aside from that, um, I'm really interested in the strategic thinking and the strategic planning that goes into all the work that my, my team and I do. Um, so that's why I've stayed and that's why I've been really interested. But really through your time in the ResEc major, um, there's so many different things that you do that either involve planning, involve teamwork, involve data analytics, involve presenting, involve really any, any sort of area that you might be interested in. I just think it's applicable to so many fields. Um, but I, I see Natalie is on the call and, and her class actually, ResiCon 452 was a really big one for me um, that I really, really enjoyed and that really kind of solidified what I thought I wanted to do. Um, if anyone here has taken her class before, I don't know, she still does the case studies, but um, we did a massive case study in her class. Um, and that I, I really enjoyed that. I said, this is the kind of work I want to be doing. I really enjoy this. I really thrive in this sort of project work. And so um, that's kind of an example of just how ResiCon really helped me figure out what I wanted to do, because I think it still stands. So yeah. I kind of fell into my current um, career. Um, like I said, I was, you know, working at State Street while an under while I was studying for like my undergraduates. Um, but while I like worked in, you know, at State Street and was just working with a bunch of numbers, I really liked it. And I didn't know what the economics major was going to really take me. I thought I was actually going to be in like politics and, you know, continue down that route. Um, but with econ, I like was able to work with like Excel and just be a master in Excel um, and just be really analytical. And from there, I'm a finance manager now. So I don't know, I feel like sometimes like you don't really know what you wanna do, but you have kind of like an idea or like the realm of that you wanna be in. And like, the more you just, like Ashley said, the more you know what you don't wanna do, you get closer to knowing what you do wanna do. And that's kind of what I did. and. Here I am still learning, still trying to achieve and like grow. Um, but yeah, I feel like having my degree in economics definitely got me to where I am now. So um, just having like the picture and the mapping of like the realm that you wanna be in and like the impact that you wanna make um, definitely helps. Yeah, there's a Reza class called Foundations to Frontiers. I don't know if the econ department has like a similar equivalent, um, but we basically like learn about technical programs, uh, Microsoft's uh, Access, I think is one, Excel, and then SAS. Um, and now being at Liberty, the three technical programs we use the most are SAS, Excel, and Power BI, actually. So um, just starting from that class, like I definitely was like, it was, I had never really like, you know, like even Excel, like I was just not really proficient in any of those and starting there and like trying to see like what data analytics is and like how many different companies use it. Like I was like, okay, like if I try to learn this a little more, like I think that I would, you know, have a lot of options and like different companies that I could work at. And I wasn't too sure about insurance starting out. I was like, you know, it could be boring. I don't really know how I'm going to feel about this. And like being here, I can absolutely say like, I really do like this industry. It's so different. And just um, honestly, like really like fun to me like there's so many different departments that I didn't know about like it's not just like claims and like the I don't know base stuff that you think about um so yeah I would say just like figuring out like like there are just so many different fields that you could go into from econ or resec um Ashley mentioned like consulting analytics project management data science like just trying to see like what you know interests you and like even like looking up like what is like data science and like watching like little crash courses and like seeing what you can do and just like knowing what different fields are like um I feel like is helpful too. Nima you started this but I saw that there was a question of recommended classes so I just wanted to see if 
any of the panelists had other classes they remember by title or number that stood out to them as great experiences. And then we'll come to the other question in the chat. Um, one class that I remember to this day was price theory. Um, I was going to take game theory or either price theory, and I took price theory. I think that, I forget, was that with you, John? Oh, okay. So there it is. Um, it was a great class because I feel like I still like reference a lot of things that I learned in that class to this day. Um, so that would be one class that I definitely remember. Um, that was incredible. I will never forget price theory. Um, <laughs> that was probably the hardest class I took at UMass. I really won't lie. Um, that was like one of the classes I was like, um, can I do this major? Like, am I supposed to be here? But um, I will never forget that class. Um, I made some really good friends in that class too. We were doing all the OWL homeworks together. I'll never forget it. Um, but yeah, I ResiCon 202 price theory. Um, I love Nima that you remembered Foundations to Frontiers. I talk about that class all the time and I don't remember what number it is. I can never remember the name, but I was like, there was one class that I swear I reference to all the time because it taught me Excel, it taught me SAS, it taught me so much. And I tell people all the time that I think that should be a class that everyone at UMass should take. Like it has helped me so much. And the team that I'm on right now, you've either been there for five years or you've been there for 25 years. And there's a lot of people that don't know all the things that you can do with Excel. So um, it's helped me stand out. That's been an incredible class. I'm really lucky I got to take that one. And then, like I said, ResiCon 452, ResiCon 453, um, once you get up there, those are really great classes. Um, ResiCon 453 is all about antitrust laws. Um, and my firm was going through a merger um, with another large firm. And so I was like connecting all these dots and it was really, really interesting to see. Um, there's a lot of classes I could mention, um, but also I believe if it's, your, if we had a junior year seminar or whatever the course was um, that I took with you, Colby, that was also incredibly helpful where we were working on resumes, cover letters, um, because I already had an internship the year before, but um, I was nowhere near ready to apply for internships again. It takes constant revision, constant help. And so um, those classes are all incredibly helpful. Yeah, um, another class, I don't know if they still have it because I know the res ec department's a little bit different now, but when I majored in it, it was like managerial, the natural resource and environmental. And I was on that track and it's funny because now I'm obviously at insurance. I'm not doing anything with um, environmental science, but this class by Nathan Chan, it was advanced topics and natural resource economics. And that honestly, like I can apply that to so many things that I even do now because it was like, we, we would read like science reports, like stuff about energy usage and stuff and learn about regressions. But like one of the assignments he had us do was like, we would like read through the whole report and come up with three questions. And they were really confusing reports. And just like that whole concept of like now being in the work field and like having something big and like trying to like drive insights from that. Like, I feel like it's just, that was really helpful. It was a really challenging class, but it was also really interesting. Um, so yeah, it's just, I guess, funny how now I don't do anything with environmental, but like still that class was so helpful. Um, so yeah, I don't know if they still have it or anything similar, but that as well. Yes. Great, thank you. Um, so there was another uh, question in the chat that says, what is some excellent advice you either received or wish you had received while you were a student that was that has stuck with you early in your professional careers? I feel like for me, I wish that people told me more that um, just obtaining a degree doesn't mean that I need to jump into the workforce because I'm naturally very creative, I'm an innovator. Um, and I feel like because of society, I definitely just dived right into, you know, working right after college. Um, and I want to just remind people and students that there are other options and, you know, there's ways to create a job on your own. And like, that's kind of still what I'm working towards is just creating my own dream job. Um, so I definitely just want to encourage students that, you know, if there's not a job out there that you feel like resonates to your soul, definitely go and create it. Um, and I wish someone told younger me that.
I think some great advice I got when I was younger and I was looking for an internship um, was that you're a lot more qualified than you think you are and you have a lot more experience than you think you do. Um, a lot of jobs, even full-time jobs, internships require you to have some sort of experience. And if it's your first professional job, you might be thinking, you know, how am I going to answer all these questions? How do I recall a time when someone made a mistake and I fixed it? Or what am I going to talk about when I led a team of people? But you have so much more experience based off of the classes that you take, experiences that you had in between semesters in college, at part-time jobs you have in college, um, really anything. Um, the organizations that you're involved in, you have so much more to go off of than you think you do. And it might take some extra time and effort to think of those creative answers. But um, I used to get really hard on myself and say, oh my gosh, am I even qualified to do this? I don't even know what to say, or I feel like my answers aren't good enough. But also preparation speaks, speaks so loudly to an interviewer. So if they know that you've put time and effort into thinking of your answers, um, that, that also shows. And at, at some point, everyone needs to start somewhere. So your answers don't have to be perfect either. Um, and the more interviews you do, the easier it gets. But really good advice that I got um, that's always stuck with me um, is that you just always have more experience than you think you do. And you're always a lot more qualified than you think you do. Kind of going off of what Samari says, if you're reading something and you're like, I don't know if, if I can do this or if I'm qualified, if I like this, um, still just apply. You really never know. Um, and it could end up being something that you could be really great at. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's great advice. And also going back to what um, Samari said about like not getting stressed out if you're not doing what you think you're supposed to be doing, as long as you're like actively focusing on your development and like keeping in mind what your larger, bigger picture goals are, you're fine. Like if you don't get a job, like right out of college, or if you don't get that internship, like just do other things that like, at least like help you and like you're just like at least putting time aside like to focus on your interests um like for me it's like okay yeah I started the corporate nine to five route but it doesn't mean that I'm stuck here forever if I don't want to be like I'm learning what I like right now you know like whether it be working with people and talking about career career stuff or maybe I want to do be an entrepreneur or something like just like keeping yourself in check and like knowing that it's okay to like not do what everybody else is doing um and yeah, so I actually really like that, what you said earlier about also like being a girl boss and just like, I don't know, just trying to, I guess, just like know what also like your strengths and weaknesses are. And like, like if there's something that somebody else says that inspires you, like, well, okay, like what, what about that inspires you? So yeah, I guess just like bigger picture, just like it's okay if you're not, you don't have that job or internship right away too. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like one last thing I kind of want to just add to that is like, um, I feel like I always had to prove myself and prove how like smart I was, prove my Excel skills and just how knowledgeable I was. And I feel like I would just tell someone that's younger than me, definitely just always have your ducks in a row and always like just be enhancing your skills and constantly learning because um, you never will know when you have to actually prove your skills and actually showcase like the work that you've done. So I feel like just always, just always be up ahead of the curve. And that's through knowledge, that's through your skills and that's whatever resonates to you. Definitely just always be ahead of the curve and um, yeah, just keep learning. Definitely always stay learning and continue to grow. I would be remiss if I didn't ask the next question. Oh, wait, I see one here from John. Did you find it valuable to talk to your professors, go to their office hours? Um, so if you can answer that, and then I'm gonna pose a question about possible opportunities that people in the audience might have to connect with you around your employers. Yes, I went to office hours for probably every professor. I think naturally I'm just like shameless and asking questions, like even if they're like little ones, like if I have like the smallest thing, I'm like, no, like I need this answered. Like I would go in all the time. And I think that's even, it is valuable to connect with professors um, and just like talk to them and get to know them. And it like helps you feel like you're trying and lets them know you're trying. And it's just like, honestly, like really nice to just like get to know everybody and like that like 
you know, can create like lasting connections with your professors and also just like transitioning into the workforce, like keeping that same mentality, like kind of what um, Samara, you were saying about being inquisitive and curious, like you need to be coachable. Like it's okay if you're not that person that knows everything. Like a lot of times employers don't really want that. Like you just, you have to be willing to like adapt and receive feedback and like work with your, you know, boss or superior, whoever. So I feel like that's kind of similar to like the whole going into office hours things, but. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's definitely valuable to keep in contact and just make sure your professors know who you are, know your name, know your face. Um, I still keep in contact with a few of my professors from UMass and they're still rooting for me. And it's been great. Like, I definitely recommend keeping in contact and just a great relationship with anyone you meet throughout your professional um, trajectory, whether that's at UMass, um, at like previous employers that you used to work for, definitely just remaining, um, remaining in contact and just establishing a great relationship. And I think that just sets you off in life just to, um, you know, follow up and, you know, be a great person and just remain in contact with people. Yeah, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I actually, um, believe it or not, I was incredibly shy, especially when I was younger in college, like freshman, sophomore, Ashley would like not say a peep ever. Um, and I, I actually, that was when I met Professor Spragan, John, who's on the call. Um, I actually, I did not go to office hours. For some reason, I, I went to his office to pick up an exam that I don't remember for a price theory, that I don't know if I did very well on, um, but I, I went to his office to go pick up an exam that was graded. Um, and he was super welcoming and just started talking to me. And that kind of made me feel a lot more comfortable going up to him and asking him questions. And like I said, I was very shy, so I didn't dare ask a question in class. So if I ever had a question, I went to office hours. Um, and so that was really where I started to build my relationship with professors. Um, again, I mentioned Natalie for ResiCon 452. I was a junior when I took that class and that was when I sought out office hours and, and I went to her and I said, listen, it's early and I feel like I'm already falling behind. Like I wanna make sure I know how I'm doing in this class and what I can do to do better. Um, and so definitely it, it takes some time to build that confidence, especially if you're a bit on the shyer side or you don't necessarily know what questions to ask and that's okay. Um, but I think if you're young and you're seeking new relationships and new connections with your professors um, and you don't necessarily know what questions to ask, you can always just stop in and just introduce yourself, especially when you are in a class that may have 40 to 60 people in it. Um, I know that they always appreciate when they get to know their students on a more individual level. So even if you just go in and you introduce yourself and you say, I'm really interested in learning more about this class, I think it could be relevant to what I want to do in the future after UMass, or, you know, I, I chose this class because I need the extra credits, but I'm really liking it so far. Um, those are some easy gateways just to kind of get your foot in the door because trust me, I was nervous in the beginning and that was one of the things I was hearing people say all the time is talk to your professors, make sure they know you, you don't want to be, you know, just a random face in a class of 100 people. Um, but it definitely takes time and, and, and you'll get there for sure. I definitely did. And um, similar to what Nima and Samari said, I, I still have connections at UMass for people that I know that I can always reach out to and talk to. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's extremely beneficial. I see Natalie was referencing that it helps a great deal on the professor's end too. So when you're looking for a reference, um, knowing that person, having met with them in office hours is a great, um, you know, it, it works well for both parties in a lot of ways. And John, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just, I just want to point out that we're professors because we like students. We want to help students. This is this is great for me to see these former students who have gone off and done done really well for themselves. There's there's really no better part of the job to me than than meeting the students and and then and then feeling like I'm helping them go on to succeed, right? Um, and so don't be shy to to go and talk to your professors. I think. I think that's a, it's a hugely valuable 
part of the experience. And I, and I think that that is another one of the, the strengths of ResEc, that we are a smaller department, that, that you aren't one of a thousand students, you're, you're one of a much smaller group of students. And, and so our professors do have more time to, to talk to you individually. Anyway, thank you. I was just gonna echo that clearly you all figured this out. I mean, you're here for a reason, right? We made these amazing, wonderful connections with you as undergrads. And this is some of the fruit of what comes of that too, is we get to see you in these spaces, invite you back in and have you share your wisdom. So it kind of all comes full cycle if you've made those connections during your undergrad years. Um, I wanted to ask um, if, and it's okay if the, if the answer is no, but I'm sure there might be some students in the audience who are curious about internship or job opportunities. And so I wanted to ask the three of you, are there internship or job opportunities that you'd like to discuss? And, or do you want to share contact information in the chat for students to inquire further with you or maybe just make those individual connections? So throwing all that out there. My company is actually hiring right now. So I was just on a call um, so yeah, I work at a media advertising company and we're actually, we just like acquired another company. So we have like $4 million, um, that will be allocated. So we're hiring like a ton of staff. So if anyone's looking for a job in advertising media, definitely reach out. Um, and then if you guys would like to connect with me, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, or you can email me. Yeah, same with um, the ADP, the Analytics Developmental Program at Liberty. Um, I have nothing but good things to say. I will put in some information, the website to go to um, for applying and also just like my email in the chat. Um, but it's honestly has been really good for just like fresh out of college. Like it's okay if you have that base level understanding, like not so good at Excel yet, like all those. Um, it's been just like really like they definitely like take time to train you and all that. So yeah, if anyone has questions, feel free to email me, but yes, we are hiring for interns and also full-time. Yeah, same for my company as well. I feel like a lot of companies are looking for talent right now, but both for interns and full-time. I know my specific group that I work for, um, it's the transportation and logistics practice for Aon. Um, that was the group I interned for and I now work for. Um, they usually hire two interns every summer. Um, and so they're actively looking for interns and I believe the internship will be virtual. Um, I know that if you look for other um, opportunities throughout the firm, some of them may be in person or hybrid, um, but I know that ours will be virtual. Um, and so if you are interested in working in risk management or commercial risk solutions, um, I'll put my email in the chat and you can send me an email and I can kind of get you referred. Um, but in terms of other opportunities in the firm, um, just take a look. And if you need a reference, I'm happy to help out. I'm also on LinkedIn too. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. I think speaks back to the networking question that was posed far earlier in our panel. This is how you do it, right? So you all happen to know about opportunities. You can give people insight into these departments, make that personal connection. And so we appreciate you paying that forward um, and being willing to chat with students who might have some follow-up questions. Um, we're at 4.55. The event is scheduled to go until five unless there's pressing questions that extend beyond that where an individual can stay on. and. Um, we'll try to get into more detail. But in those last five minutes, are there any questions or curiosities from the audience that we haven't addressed yet? Valerie, yeah. Hey, everyone. Hi. So um, you guys, when you started out, said I was determined to get an internship. Like you had motivation. Kind of, you hit the ground running at UMass knowing you wanted to do that. I, you know, feel like I talked to a lot of students who are like, um, where I have to convince them that doing that early work is what's necessary. You know, that like, what do you mean? You know, it's like, well, handshake. Yeah. You know, whatever. I don't care about handshake. I don't need to set up my profile. Um, it's not that they're naysayers so much as they, um, I think they don't realize the resources UMass has to offer, right? You know, but the SBS career services office, the counselors who can help you with the resumes, the classes you can take to help you get better at interview. Like, you know, we have all these classes and all these services um, and um, you all used them and took advantage of them. So I'm just wondering when I'm talking to students, I need like the elevator pitch for how those help 
so that I can encourage other people to use them. Um, does that make sense? You guys can help me with the, my elevator pitch. Yeah, that's 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 a really great question. Um, I guess one thing I would I would include. I don't necessarily have a have a pitch ready just yet in my head, but something I would try to include is at least if people don't necessarily know what they want to do or they don't know why it's necessary, um, eventually it will be, and um, and no one's great at it when they start. And so this is something that kind of gets your foot in the door and gets you acclimated to situations like that. Um, and it gets your name out there. And the sooner you start, it's the better. Um, it's kind of like if you start investing young, you know, everything starts compounding even sooner. The sooner you get your name out there and the more you put yourself in those situations, the better equipped you are when you do figure out what you want to do or you do realize that you want to start getting an internship and start experimenting in different industries. Um, it, it teaches you a lot. And, and I think that if students are struggling to see the value in it, if they start using these resources, they're going to find someone that does um, and then they can take after them. Yeah, and like being in Colby's class too, something I liked is like, Colby, like you would throw out like, oh yeah, there's this event happening or like we would just like kind of hear things through word of mouth because I know sometimes people miss things like through an email, but like it also does take like a certain amount of self-drive from an individual. So it's like just reminding them like if people are like, oh yeah, I'll do it later. Or, like, okay, I guess like it's like, well, like the sooner you start, like kind of going back to what I said, like start applying in fall instead of scrambling in the spring, you know, just like emphasizing that um, I feel like is the, the most that you can do. And then like from them, the rest comes on their end. I can ask like one kind of follow-up to that because a lot of you said, you know, you applied 30, you know, internship, 50 internships. How do you, how, what is the, what is the thing that keeps you going amid the rejection? Because you gotta have the, a lot of times I'll talk to students about having a thick skin. What keeps you up? Was it self determination? Was it, did you have, you know, a, dry, a team behind you, a tribe behind you? Was it a single person? What was it that kind of keeps you kind of motivated and going um, in that midst of internship search and job search and that sort of thing? I feel like knowing that something better is out there for you. Like when one door, when one door closes, another one's going to open. So just, you know, staying motivated and staying encouraged and inspired that, um, you know, if something's for you, it will be, you'll have it. Um, and that's kind of how I live my life. Like, I just know that there's something out there for me. Um, so if you don't land an internship, just know that there's something better. An opportunity is yet to come and just keep continuing to like work hard for it. And um, yeah, just don't give up. And also just like trying to get answers from those rejections. It's like, okay, well, why aren't I hearing back? Am I missing those keywords in my resume? Or, oh, am I not hearing back because I'm a sophomore applying for like, you know, internships where they're seeking juniors going to senior year? Like just trying to see like what it is like you're missing or if there's anything you can do differently and, you know, work with like advisors for that. And if there isn't anything you can do differently, like then what Samari said, like, huge believer that everything happens for a reason, so. Yeah, I would echo both of those um, to a T. And, and the other thing too is I was very close with people that I knew had had internships and had gone through the process before. And something that they all said to me was they all got rejections too. Even the people that get accepted to an internship very early on like some people go into their senior year already with a job lined up and you're like I have no clue what I want to do um everyone has as my family used to call it like the shoebox full of rejections like it's just it's just part of playing the game almost and so even if you feel like you're the only one that doesn't have a job you're not um everyone goes through that sort of rejection and not understanding necessarily why you didn't get the job or why someone got it and you didn't. But um, if you stay close to people that have got, done what you want to do and you also keep in mind that everyone else is going through the same struggles, that can kind of give you peace of mind as well. But again, what Samari said in a nice, you know, nightly, nicely tied bow, everything does happen for a reason and what's meant for you will come to you. Yeah, I would also just like to say, um, 
using and utilizing, um, what is it, like the alumni connection platform is so helpful. Um, I was out in LA like two months ago and I connected with alumni that graduated like 30 years ago and they just helped me with so much in Los Angeles and they met with me and they were just being like amazing resources and also my current role my boss actually graduated from UMass Amherst so definitely utilizing you know the resources at UMass and um, you know just making connections while like while there and even postgraduate um, just, you know, remaining in contact and just utilizing all the resources, the platforms that we have, because you don't know who graduated from UMass Amherst, and you don't know if someone can help you with whatever you're seeking out in life. So, yeah. Wonderful. I think that that's a great note to end on, to know that there's all these options out there. There is rejection out there, but there's an end, at the, you know, there's that the, the outcome at the end and everyone has to wait until they get to that point. You don't know when, if it's gonna show up tomorrow or a couple months from now um, when you're in the application process. Um, I, call, I love the chaos theory of career. That's my shameless plug. If you haven't learned about chaos theory of career, like it's great. I feel like it speaks the language of economists in some ways too. And it helps you just understand that um, it's like a butterfly effect, right? Um, and so every little thing you did, including coming here as an attendee tonight, um, may result in something that you would have not anticipated otherwise. Um, and with that, I just want to tell everyone, thank you. Um, this has been wonderful. We're at time, so we're going to close the program here. But um, it was really great hearing from all of you. Um, it was wonderful meeting you, Samari, and getting to see some familiar faces again. Um, so thank you. We hope you'll join us again for future talks. And yes, um, panelists, you're welcome to stay on for a minute as we close, but you do not have to. Um, and thank you, everyone.